Just last week, an aircraft had a total electrical failure, and I want to show you what that looks like. There's a hero controller in this one. This has a great outcome, but you want to stick to it all the way to the end. Let's watch. Yes, 572, can you get me a favor? Yes. Yeah, we got an emergency inbound to uh, Lufkin Airport, and they're having a hard time with their um, electricals, and I don't know if they can turn on the runway lights there at Lufkin. So can you switch over to that frequency and the mom for me? I believe it's the Unicop. Yeah, we can try to do thrust 572. Okay, thrust 572 is not the aircraft that's having the electrical problem. It's another aircraft. We'll see them here in a second. But she's describing, she's asking thrust 572 to help. And she's uh, asking them to turn on the lights at a remote airport. Now, what is that? A lot of these remote airports have what's called pilot controlled lighting. And you can dial up a frequency on a VHF radio. And just by clicking the mic without speaking, just clicking, it turns the lights on at the airport and it, it varies the intensity from real high down to low. So you can even adjust it the way you want it when you're coming into an airport. This is one of the coolest things in aviation but she can't do it from her vantage point. She needs an airborne aircraft to do it. This thrust 572 has to get close enough to the airport to turn on the lights. So this guy is gonna be a real hero as he assists. Okay, so right, 572, it's uh, two, three point, I mean, yeah, one, two, three point oh. So that's the, the frequency in, uh, he's gotta click Unicom. on. One, two, three point oh for the Unicom. All right, so he's gonna give it a try. He's probably dialing in right now. You can hear him, right? So this is a, an Ember Air uh, 300, and the call sign is XSR301 out of Raleigh Durham to College Station. They're cruising at 430 when they lose both generators and all the lights. When you come to call Houston Center, so I know you're having an uh, MC situation here with electrical issues. Acknowledge them and identify this. So she's talking to them, and they can't transmit. They can't do anything. She's trying to get them to identify. They can't, they can't hear and they can't call, respond. Uh, center, I did not look in airport here, 12 o'clock and about three zero miles. Um, I can't hear anything you're trying to say. If, if you can, I didn't, if you hear this, um, I'd appreciate it. Left altimeter 3005. So here's what's going on in the cockpit. They lose both generators and just like that, all the lights go out. And they're checking around looking for a checklist. They're looking for a flashlight to see something. Now, remember, the airplane keeps flying. The engines are fine. The airplane is fine. They just can't tell what they're doing. Uh, once they get the checklist out and they get the flashlight to look at it and they shut off a few things and they turn a couple other things back on, now they get the lights to come back on. And when the lights come back on, it's not everything they had before, but it's enough to fly the airplane. So the captain usually has some sort of an attitude gyro. Usually one radio will work and they have one form of navigation. They might've had multiple before that, but now that they're down to just battery power, they're on a time leash. They're on a short leash uh, to get down on the ground before they burn their battery out and then de deplete it completely. So this controller is awesome. She is broadcasting to them everything they need to know, not knowing whether they can hear her or not. She's assuming that they can. They're going to be back online here in a few minutes, but it does take a while for them to work through all the checklists. Here's your 301 to Lufkin, other um, automated um, observation wind 1709 er Visibility one zero, ceiling broken at four thousand five hundred. She gives them the weather. Temperature one eight two point um, six, altimeter three zero zero five. So she gives them everything they need to know, even though she's just broadcasting in the blind. Now she's going to check in with thrust five seven two to see if he got the lights on. Thrust five seven two, able to switch over there to turn on those runway lights. And you probably can't see from that um, location, but uh, were you able to do that? We, we pressed the mic seven times on the frequency. We're still pretty far away from it. We'll keep trying as we get further. And now we can't see the airport. So it's 572. I appreciate your help. Yeah, remember, these guys are altering their flight plan to go help in this emergency. So this is really a team effort going on here. And like he said, we're probably a little too far away. They're going to keep going closer to the airport. He's going to keep clicking the mic until he can see the lights come on. Air Share 301. I think the runway, the alignment lights to runway 7 are out. Mayor Sheriff, one, I'm not sure if you can hear any of that. Any of that. We did have an aircraft try to turn on the runway light. Okay, she's broadcasting everything he might need to hear. 
Airstreet 301, uh, with the wind being 170, are you wanting to land any kind of runway? Are you wanting 16? If so, acknowledge with the request. So she can hear him trying to, to get some sort of broadcast out. So she's now improvising and saying, just click three times. This is not standard by any means. She's making this up as we go. This is, this lady deserves a medal. It's here, 301. Muskin Airport is off the chair. One o'clock, like a 262 heading and one two miles. She's going to guide him in. He's going to be a little high for a while. He's probably reluctant to come down. He's setting up for run, runway three four. So acknowledge with three clicks. Okay, she's down to this three-click thing with him. Center Air 301 emergency. 301 Ethan. Okay, now you hear from him for the first time. Got you loud and clear now, Air 301. Okay, so he says, we got you loud and clear now. So what I'm saying happened was they worked through their restoration checklist. In other words, they lost both generators. They've gotten down to battery power. They were able to flip the right switches to get just that one radio back on. And now he's switched over to the radio, and they're able to talk back and forth. So this is a huge relief to everybody, but this controller continues to be amazing. 301, he's got you on clear, left an altimeter 3005. Yeah, because uh, we, uh, we need a, probably a mid-range speed. So they need a, a runway. One, yeah, um, run. the wind at 170 at um, Niner. Stand by on the runway. At 5100 landing to the west, we are at total emergency our total electrical failure at this time. Okay, you can hear the tone in their voice. <laughs> when everything goes black in the cockpit, this is very unusual. And so uh, these guys are experiencing this for the first time. They're doing a great job keeping uh, what we would say the blue side up and flying. But at, at night when this happens, this is a total, yeah, it's it's tough. And it's 301, the longest runway at uh, Lufkin, is runway 725,400 feet. is a um, hard service. Okay, anything uh, close by? Well, we'll take that. Airstream 301, it's a good thing. 3,000, and are you able to turn with heading? You can turn with heading, correct. Okay, now it, let's assume for a minute that their main attitude uh, instrument doesn't work. They also have a standby attitude instrument, which is just a wet compass. It's it's it doesn't need any electricity at all. It's a little ball that sits in a globe of water on every airplane, and you can roughly fly headings based on basically kind of like an old-fashioned compass. So if they lose total power, they've still got a way to, to go to where they need to go. Thank you, 301. I, I'm getting a lot of background noise here. You can take headings? Yes, we can take headings at this time. Okay, so they've got at least that much Roger, would control. you like to land your Always uh, probably to the uh, west if we could come straight in. Airstreet 301, you're uh, Lufkin Airport right, right now, it's 2 o'clock at about 6 miles, you're still a little high, um, do you have the airport in sight at all? I think there's a layer out there. Now we're descending out of 7,600 this time. Okay, at 6 miles and 7,600, they're too high. My guess is they're going to have to go back out and come back around or choose another runway. I think what happens here is they're probably going to end up doing both. Airstreet 301, Roger, just find your present heading right now. And um, make like a two five zero heading. I'll give you a base turn here shortly to line you up for runway seven since you're over flying airport right now. Yeah, they're over the airport right heading, now. And uh, we'll take the base turn. This guy sounds a little shaky in his voice. I get it. Here's your three zero one. You're still um, a little high. I'm gonna have you on the heading a minute or two and turn you to the north, which will be a base turn for runway uh, seven, which is the longest run they have at Lufkin. Um, once you're back the, um, the layer there, let me know. I did have an aircraft try to switch over to Unicorn runway lights on for you. We're just cut, breaking out right now. We're kind of uh, in the bottom here. We're up at 4,700. Okay, so to make matters worse, these guys are in weather. They just are breaking out now at 4,700 feet. So they've been descending what's called IFR, instrument flight rules, down through the weather uh, with very sketchy instrumentation on the airplane. And this is a real this is a real pucker factor thing going on here. But they're going to break out and, and get hopefully some Here's visual. One, Roger, um, maintain 2,500, please. 2,500 air, That'll get them in an altitude where they can maneuver around. Airshare 301, flying of uh, 340. All right, so she's bringing them around again. Airshare 301. 
Yeah, we can do that. Thrust 572. So back to Thrust 572. She needs to get him down below to see when he clicks to get the lights on, whether they come on or not. Thrust 572, just let him maintain 5,000. Just let him maintain 5,000. Thrust 572. Airshare 301, quiet heading 020 now. Right to 020, and don't make it. We've got quite a few checklists to run. Quite a few checklists to run, no kidding. They do. Turn 30 degrees right, uh, get you over towards Bluffton Airport about this emergency. Turn 30 degrees right, thrust 572. I love how she's using every resource that she has available to her, and these guys in thrust 572 are fantastic. They're cooperating completely, and they're going to be uh, another hero in this episode. Here's your 301, just taking you on your position. You're about 1 1 miles west of the field. I'm going to turn you around to the right to try to line you up with runway 7. Okay, here's 301. Okay. Senator, I hate to do this, but we did, with this configuration, we need 6,000 feet. Is there anything close to uh, Lumpkin? When with this configuration, it probably means he can't get his flaps down. I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, they may be electric on this airplane. And so if he's got to land flaps up, they're going to need more runway because they're going to land faster. Uh, that could be, be the issue. Uh, you'll see. Stick with this to the end because this really gets tense uh, at the very end. Okay, yeah, you, you're in a beautiful base turn right now for two skies. If you could, by heading of... Uh... One, one, zero. She's giving him a big old racetrack. Lots of room to come back around long, straight Press in. 572, let me know if you get to the airport in sight, please. The lights are on at Lufkin. Okay. Press 572, thank you so much. The guy's got the lights turned on. That's great. Share 301, that heading should line perfectly up with that runway. I've got uh, confirmation from that thrust light that the runway lights are on. Okay, my uh, FO has it. So they're in a turn coming around. The guy in the right seat has it. Issue sure 301, you said you have it in sight? Do you have the runway in sight? We're just high. Issue okay. sure 301, runner. And be advised, runway um, 16 is only 4,000 feet. Uh, again, runway 725 is 5,400 feet. Okay, why is she telling him that? She's telling him that so they don't line up on the wrong runway, right? These guys are really only going to get one shot at this. So she wants to make sure that they get on the right runway because if they get on the other one, it's a much shorter runway. They need every inch of this runway that they can get. This controller is awesome. Yeah, we would like 725. Issue 301, Roger. Um, are you, what, what heading are you turning toward? We've got the airport in sight. I'm heading uh, about 180. Now, that pilot-controlled lighting, it turns on the lights on all the runways. So, again, they might line up on the wrong runway. She used double, triple, quadruple checking, making sure that they get the right runway here. Here, sure, three, one, roger, turn left, heading uh, one, six, zero. That means they've got all their checklists done. Here, sure, three, zero, one. Here, sure, three, zero, one. going to maintain 2,400. Okay. Now they've got the runway in sight. Yes, sir. I'm going to line you up with that runway here about 105. That's the compass heading. Yes, sir. 301. Kind of overshooting the center line there. Opening of 085. We're rolling out this. Yes, sir. 301. Okay. Yes, sir. 301. The advisory is approved unless you want to stay here with me. Um, I will need confirmation <laughs> that you're uh, on the ground safely, please. Yeah, we'll stay with you. It's okay because only one of us has radios and that's me flying. Okay, so he just gave you all the details here. Now, when she says switch over to advisories, what does she mean? That Unicom frequency that she gave Thrust 572 earlier, that 123.0, that's the Unicom frequency that everybody going into this uncontrolled airport would talk on. And they would broadcast to everybody else exactly where they are. I'm on a left downwind. I'm on a right downwind. I'm on a long final for this runway. Now I'm on a three-mile final. Now I'm touching down. Now I'm taxiing. That lets other airplanes that are on that frequency know basically what the tower would tell them, but everybody is self-clearing themselves. So you have to listen up on those frequencies. 
it's the middle of the night. Nobody else is there. This guy wants the reassurance that he's talking to a human being. So that's why she says, unless you want to stay with me. And he's like, yeah, I want to stay with you. Okay. I'm, I'm all for this. Yeah, um, that's, I do not see any traffic in the vicinity. And you're still um, about three and a half miles west of the field. There. So she's not a tower controller at the field. This is air traffic control. But she says, I don't see anybody in the vicinity. So you're good to go. That's flight 572. Can you uh, go over to Unicom and um, transmit for that air share that they're taking runway 7? Now look how she keeps coordinating this. She's still got that thrust 572. So she says, go to that 1230 and just broadcast to anybody that might be out there that maybe I can't see that some guy is set up and he's going to land on runway 7. And thrust, of course, says, yeah, I'll do it. Yes, we can do that. Okay, traffic. There is a phenom on short final for runway 7. Uh, emergency aircraft, Lufkin. Perfect. They're on the Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate everything you've done tonight. Stick with us to the end. Hear that? No, thank you. I didn't know if we would make it. This is a big, this is a big dumb deal um, for these guys. And now they're going to tell you what happened to their airplane when they touched down. Three zero one. I got your I thought your installation. Obviously, um, y'all have a good night. Okay. And three zero one. Seven two. Would you like seven thousand again? Uh, yes, we would. Thrust five seven two. Thrust five seven two. Come and change seven thousand. Seven thousand. Thrust five seven two. Thanks. And thrust seven or five. Thank you so much um, for your help. It helped a lot. So this is interesting. The dynamic between these the two airplanes and the controller. Because they're all like a huge sigh of relief. This guy's on the ground. They're safe. Uh, this was a hero moment for everybody. And now there's like the, what do we do with the, the feelings that we have, right? These are human beings. So she's like, thank you, thank you, thank you. And these guys are, no, thank you. And the guys on the ground, they're just, you know, like, whew. you know, this controller is great. If, I, if this is up to me, I would get out of that airplane. I'd go find that controller and, and give her a great big hug. Trust me, Mrs. Captain Steve would completely agree with that. And so that's the sort of feeling that you have at this moment. Um, watch how they, they continue to, to do this. Happy to help other states that are 572. Yeah, I don't think they would have been able to turn on the runway light. So you, you really, 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 really help. Thank you. Can you notify anybody? We're on the runway, so you can show 055 closed. Why? We may have two tires. Oh. Um, but we're going to need some help. I don't know. Make a call to anybody would be great. Okay. They blew <laughs> their tires on landing. That's how they touched down very firm, and they probably slammed on the brakes to make sure that they got stopped in that shorter runway. That's what I would have done. And you know what? You sacrifice a tire or two, that's completely fine. But now there's probably strewn tires all over the runway, and they're sitting on the runway. They want to let everybody else know there's an airplane on the runway with, with FOD debris. Don't land on that runway. Sure, three zero one. Yeah, we're getting on that now. Are y'all safe though? Is everything okay? Safe. All well. All well. Okay. In the airship three zero one. Before you go, any souls on board? We need. We need that. Total of five souls on board. You can show zero seven two five closed. Yeah, I will pass that along. Y'all need any kind of equipment out there, a fire truck or anything like that? Yeah, we see two trucks kind of racing down the uh, <laughs> way, coming towards us. Okay. That's it. This is a great outcome. This woman deserves a, the Presidential Medal of Honor. She at least deserves a huge hug. She is absolutely the hero of this story. Thrust 572 is the second hero in the story, and, and everybody, all five people on that airplane, uh, ought to, they owe her a debt of gratitude right, for a Herculean effort on her part. But this is what happens if you lose uh, both generators on an airplane. Now, my airplane, 10 generators, right? This one, only two. Everything went black. You know what? The airplane kept flying, and they all worked it out. And it has a great, great outcome. Well, now you know. I'm Captain Steve. Fly safe. Hey, thanks for watching. Do me a favor. Like and subscribe to this video. And special thanks to our friends over at Voss Aviation for putting together the video that we reacted to today.